The broadcast of the regular meeting of the Minneapolis Local Board of Appeal and Equalization will now begin. Good morning. Welcome to the live broadcast of our virtual meeting. This meeting includes the remote participation of members as authorized under Minnesota statutes. Sections 13D.021 declared to the local health pandemic. For the record, my name is Neil Anderson and I'm chair of the Local Board of Appeal and Equalization. I will now call this meeting to order. The open meeting law requir requires a roll call vote to be conducted during a virtual meeting and a certification form will be completed for each local board meeting. This initial roll call will allow the city assessor to complete the certification form on behalf of the board members with a verbal signature. Will the clerk call the roll so that we may verify the presence of a quorum? Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havoc. Present. Board member Reed. Present. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson. Present. There are three members present. Let the record reflect that quorum of the board is present. We will proceed to the agenda, copy of which was posted for public access to the city's legislative information system, which is available at limsminneapolismngovernor Members, the agenda is before you for your consideration. May I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved, Havig. Second, Reed. It has been moved by Havig and seconded by Reed to adopt the agenda. Uh, with that, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havig. Board member Havoc. Aye. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson. Aye. There are three ayes and two absent. The motion passes and the agenda printed is adopted. New business, uh, we have eight appeals scheduled from 10 to 11 a.m. We will proceed in case order as listed on the agenda. When your case is called, the applicant will be given five minutes to present the appeal. The board will consider and take action after hearing these cases, and if time allows or at the end of the day after hearing all cases. Uh, if your phone is muted, press star six to unmute. Property owners will be notified of the decision by mail after the board has adjourned. So we'll start with item number three, 1011 Humboldt Avenue North, case number 20BH-0048. The applicant is Bernard O'Brien. Please state your name, property address for the record, and then present your appeal to the board. You'll have five minutes. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. O'Brien. Good morning, Bernard O'Brien. Uh, case number 20BH-0048, property address 1011 Humboldt Avenue North, Minneapolis. Um, a couple of quick things I'd like to present here is, I think you have in front of you the appeal that I stated, uh, along with uh, charts and annual realtors report, the city assessors reports, and my valuation. Uh, if we just look one, point one, economics. Uh, if we look at Minneapolis valuation and tax increases, we kind of want to interchange those as they're obviously linked. Primary objective is going to be tax mitigation from valuation. If we look at the chart presented, we can see that um, the tax increase per annum over a five-year stretch is 6.5% per annum or 40.4%. If we go to the valuation, uh, the valuation of the city has increased at a 9.9% per annum uh, over the course of the five-year period that I've, I've portrayed in my uh, table representing valuation tax and income modeling. Um, just a couple of quick points. If we compare the annual assessor's report with the annual Minnesota Realtors report, on 2018, we're looking at an assessor for the city at 302547 valuation, and that is pulled from the annual assessor's report on an aggregate median. 
And if we compare that to the Minnesota realtor for the same geographic area, we're at 283,000. So Minneapolis is over by 6.9% versus the Minnesota realtor. 2019, same numbers. The assessor, the Minnesota, the uh, the city assessors reported 329,202 dollars per duplex, triplex versus the Minnesota's realtor at 300. Minneapolis is over 9.7 percent. So the third point I'll bring up is property income um, and economics. Over the course of the five-year period, uh, my company's profitability has gone up by 15.2 percent or 3 percent on a per annum annualized basis. And if we look at uh, the tax rate going up 6.5 percent per annum or 40.4 percent, economically we're really starting to get skewed on valuations. And how I've come up with the valuation model and the number for 1011 is I have uh, basically looked at a broad-based market approach considering inflation income modeling. I reviewed the city valuations priced at 9.9%. I compared that to the city annual, compared that with the Minnesota Realtors averaged annual growth on a 6.3% wow. over that five-year period. I also appreciate the median and the mean valuation of the city versus these neighborhood approach uh, to come up with valuations. And this property is in a low rent, low value neighborhood. I have applied a 6.3% per annum valuation from the 2016 of $139,000 valuation. And so I come up with 188,660 versus the city uh, 205,000 valuation for the 2020 uh, assessment for the 2021 valuation year. Our primary goal is obviously to keep the tax and valuations in a normal situation. If we get out of alignment with that, the unfortunate situation in Minneapolis as a, as a, as a landlord, you know, two things. One, we have uh, space availability, and two, we'll, we'll run into more rent increases because as a business person, if we look at these numbers, the only goal is to pass this on. If we look at cost of doing business, inflation and metrics, and we compare that to the Minnesota, uh, the city assessor's report on single family, we see quite a skewed price point difference. In, in how valuations are applied to single family versus triplex, in just in terms of a metric number. And so we're looking at about a nine, at, at quite a variation. So that's why we're petitioning, and we're really hoping to keep our properties in these lower income, these fringe neighborhoods, values and tax rates at a fair and reasonable amount to keep our rents in alignment, otherwise rent just goes up, which is an unfortunate situation for obviously the end user, which is our which is our renters. Okay, so that that's my that's my case for uh, 1011 Humboldt Avenue North, Minneapolis. Uh, thank thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Are there any questions or comments from board members? Oops. Uh... Um. See, see none, uh, uh, we'll go on to item number four, 2217 Jackson Street, case number 20BH-0049. The applicant is a representative, representative of Nearbow Holdings, LLC. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Uh, Bernard O'Brien and uh, the address I believe is, is that, uh, are we talking about 20, uh, which property are we talking about? 2217 Jackson. 217 Jackson, case number 20B80049. Um, if I can ask the board's permission, uh, can I spare you all of the details I just went through, or would you uh, prefer yes, that please. I went on each property? Oh, yeah, uh, you, you can spare us on, on the, the, the broad details if you want to speak specifically to this property. Uh, that would be great. Okay. So, just to state for the record, I'll be using the exact same um, metrics that I used on case 20BH0048. And property, I have applied the same metric of 6.3% annual from the Minnesota Realtor. Uh, and if we base the value in 2016 uh, for 17 at 217,000 on an annualized growth rate of 6.3%, 
come up with a 294,500 valuation versus the city assessment of 327,000. Um, factoring in all the uh, aforementioned and spared details, that's how I've derived that valuation, and that's uh, why I make this appeal. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any uh, questions or comments uh, from board members regarding 2217 Jackson Street? Okay, seeing none, uh, uh, we'll go on to item number five, 2359 McKinley Street, case number 20BH-0050. The applicant is a representative of Nearbo Holdings, LLC. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Uh, Bernie O'Brien, case number 20BH0050, 2359 McKinley uh, Street, Northeast Minneapolis. Uh, once again, we'll spare the board with your permission all of the, the metrics that I've used to uh, value. And once again, I've applied the 6.3% uh, per annum rate. If we look at the 2016 for 2017 valuation of 39,500 and we apply that metric over that five year span, we arrive at $325,066 versus the city assessment of $365,000 and that is why I'm appealing this case. Okay, thank you very much. Again, are there any questions or comments from uh, board members regarding 2359 McKinley Street? Or in general to Mr. O'Brien uh, regarding his metrics? Okay, see, seeing none, uh, thank you for your time, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, we'll review these cases and you'll be notified in writing of our decision after adjournment. Appreciate your time and thank you so much for hearing my cases. Am I uh, free to disconnect the phone? Yes, you are. Thank you. Have a great day. Yep. Bye. Uh, item number six, 1606 Mount Curve Avenue, case number 20BH-0051. The applicant is John Norusis, uh, please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Oh, good morning, everyone. My name is John Norusis and I'm um, case number 20BH0051-1606 Mount Curve Avenue. Um, yeah, I guess I don't have a um, very thorough report like the last gentleman, but um, I purchased the price and it's kind of hard to talk about 1606 without talking about 1604 which is the next case they're bought as a package and they are one 1604 is the carriage house for 1606 um, so the full purchase price for both properties was a million fifty however on paper and I think you have some doc or maybe a screenshot I guess I did this is you're gonna have to forgive me this is my first time doing this yeah. but um, because of financing issues, trying to get a jumbo loan on two PIDs is extremely complicated. So um, the, the purchase price for 1606 Mount Kerr was actually 800,000 and 1604 was 250,000. But to avoid a 90 day period and you know possible lenders um, having losing investors uh, in the particular loan, what we did was we got creative we decided to just pay 50,000 cash for 1604 and a million even financed on 1606. So that that's why those are the way they are. Um, so okay. again, sorry, go ahead. Oh, thank you for the clarification on that. Yep, so obviously the city has the valuation of 1606 at uh, 1.68, they believe, 1.64, because they don't have it in front of me. Um, which would be uh, just about double what I paid for it. Uh, the the city has it assessed currently at one million six hundred forty eight thousand five hundred. Correct. For the one parcel. Right for the one parcel. So, um, being that I just purchased it in, uh, I think it was we closed in either late July or early August. I believe that the market reflects the current value. Uh, 
Is there anything else you'd like to add to that? Uh, no, other than that's what I believe the value is what I paid for it. So, okay. Um, uh, thank you. I'll ask the, um, do the board members uh, have any questions or comments regarding this uh, uh, 1606 Mount Curve. Um, I have just one question. Uh, when I looked online, it looked like you purchased it in an auction format. Correct. Yep. It wasn't a foreclosure or anything like that. The buyer or the seller just didn't want to wait two years on market, which was the average sale price for that neighborhood and that size of home at the time. So he kind of tried to flush all the buyers out. Mm, OK, thank you. Are there any other questions from board members? Uh, seeing none, uh, would you um, we'll go on to item number seven, which is 1604 Mount Curve Avenue, case number 20BH. Dash zero zero five two, the applicant John Narusis. Uh, please state your name and address for the record, and then present your appeal to the board. Hi, John Narusis, case number two zero BH zero zero five two, sixteen oh four Mount Curve Avenue. Um, and again, just appealing the valuation. I believe the city has it at four hundred and forty thousand or something like that. When in, in fact the, you know. I guess the record shows a fifty thousand dollar purchase price, but obviously that's not, um, you know, fully accurate. 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 So at two hundred fifty thousand was the value, um, and that's what I believe I should be taxed at. Okay. Um, just for the record, the the a city assessed market value for two thousand twenty is four hundred thirty nine thousand five hundred. Um, so, so the carriage house, uh, I just have one question to start. Uh, um, the carriage house is a, a livable uh, property? Uh, it is not livable currently. There's no stove. Um, I mean, it, it's, the tish has been closed, but I mean, I would, it would take some money to get it livable. Not much, but you need to put in some appliances, basically. Okay. So. Uh, is your intent to combine the two properties together again or uh, re uh, leave them separate? Uh, leave them separate. OK, thank you. Uh, any other questions from any of the other board members? Uh, OK, seeing none. Uh, thank you for your time, uh, Mr. Neurosis. Uh, will uh, be uh, sending out our decisions uh, by mail. OK, thank you very much. Yep, thank you. OK, bye bye. Bye. Uh, item number eight, five zero three zero Woodlawn Boulevard, case number two zero BH dash zero zero five three. The applicant is Ian Laro Svedvik. Sved Svedvik. Uh, please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Uh, thank you. Um, again, my name is Ian LaRoe Sedvik. You did a great job of <laughs> pronouncing that. And um, the address is 5030 Woodlawn Boulevard uh, in Minneapolis. So the uh, situation with us is that we had our, uh, we refinanced the end of last year. And when we got the uh, appraisal from the bank, it was, um, it came in at $1 million and the current tax value is 1.121500. 1, and so, you know, that, that's what drove us to go through this process. And the, um, you know, just our logic being that if, if the bank and, you know, they had assessed it at this rate, then that's what it would be sellable for. And um, that's what be that would be fair to pay taxes on. So the big thing that's unusual about our property is that um, it's it's a wonderful house, um, but the neighborhood is like the average uh, home value in our in our zip code is 310,000. So it's definitely unusual when it comes to comparables. Like the closest 
things that they were looking at to compare. And this, this has been the case both times that we've had the house assessed when we first were moving in and now this time, so that they're pulling comparables from like Lake Harriet when we're, we're over by Lake Nokomis and they're pulling comparables from St. Paul just because there's nothing in the area. So it, it really is unusual to, to appraise this house because it's, it's, there's nothing else like it in the area. But um, that's, that's kind of, it's, it's as simple as that. <laughs> um, just that we felt like, okay, well, this doesn't seem fair that if that's what they appraise it at for the bank, that that's what you know, we should be paying taxes on. Um, are there additional comments that you would like to make? Uh, I think I think that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I will ask the board members: uh, Is there any discussion or questions by the board? Um, I just Not have at this time. Oh. Have it. Okay, thank you. Um, the the property. Um, 5030 Woodlawn, uh, that, that is uh, on Lake Nokomis, has views of Lake Nokomis? Um, there's nothing between us and the lake, although there's trees that block a view. It's not an open view, but, but there's only the parkway between us and the lake. Okay. Uh, have you done any recent remodeling to the property? Just a, just a half bath. That's an addition or just remodeling? No, remodeling a half bath. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other questions uh, from the board? Just, just as a note, I was in in that house uh, about 20 years ago, so I, I, I've seen it once oh. before. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Were you friends with the owners? Uh, it was when it was for sale. Uh, well, might have oh, even okay. been that. Uh, it was quite some time ago, but very, very attractive property. Um, thank you. Without any other questions from the board, uh, thanks for your time and we'll pr proceed to the next case. Thank you. Thanks. Item number nine, 518 3rd Avenue Northeast, case number 20BH-0054. The applicant is Kelly Carver. Please state your name and address for the record and then you'll have five minutes to present your appeal to the board. Press pound six if you're you've been muted. A star six to unmute. Or excuse me, star six. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. Uh, my name is Kelly Carver, and uh, our the address is five one eight Third Avenue Northeast. Um, I don't have the case number in front of me. I'm I'm blind, so that, that's, that's going to be a little. Okay, thank you. Um, so, um, pretty simply, we purchased this town home in uh, August. We closed on August 9th. Uh, and we purchased the property for $380,000 even. Um, our recent tax assessed value um, that just came was for 444500 um, so $64,000 difference um, from what we paid just a few months ago. Um, the house was uh, on the market beginning February 22nd. Um, it was, uh, we actually put our offer in uh, in June, on June 22nd, in fact. So, um, you know, it was in the open market for some period and uh, um, well, we just think that um, we're being um, the value is too high. Uh, the proposed tax value is too high. We um, I did call last when after we closed last um, August. I did call the assessor's office. At the time, the property was had a tax assessed value of four hundred and Eleven thousand, and um, they but said it was too late for me to appeal um, without going through a lengthy process. Didn't make any sense to me to do that, and just to hang tight and wait for um, 
you know, until March when the new proposals come through. And um, so that's what we've done. And um, that's why we're asking for an appeal. Thank you. Uh, you have a, a little time left. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, not really. Okay. I think it's. I'll ask. I'll ask the board for uh, questions or uh, comments um, regarding 518 Third, Third Avenue Northeast. Uh, do you recall uh, how long it was on the market when when you purchased it? Yes, yeah, so it was on the market. It was put on the market. I'm pretty sure it was on February 22nd, and. Uh, uh the the value it's i believe i don't have this in front of me right now but i believe that uh it was i think they were first asking 419 or 415 i think 419 and um my wife came and looked at it at the end of march it was still on the market and at that point they had dropped it to 399 and then um, we didn't do anything about that. And then um, we looked again. I came over with her, and it was still again on the market in May. And then um, we wound up, wound up putting our uh, offer in on June 22nd. So four, four months it was on okay. the market. Thank you. Appreciate it. We appreciate that. Are there any other questions from uh, any of the other board members? OK, so seeing none, uh, thank you for your time, Mr. Carver. We'll uh, notify you in writing after adjournment. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. Have a good day. Yep. Uh, item number 10, 1025 Hawthorne Avenue, case number 20BH-0055. Uh, the applicant is a representative of Minneapolis City Parking LLC. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Hi, my name is Daniel Willard uh, for 1025 Hawthorne Avenue. Um, so this parcel is part of um, a larger property that makes up the Orpheum parking lots downtown Minneapolis. Um, you should have um, a small packet in front of you or uh, for you to review. Uh, the, this property owner sold two parcels across the street in 2019 for $3 million or approximately $83 a square foot. Uh, the assessment per square foot for this particular parcel is $96.89. So we just took that um, sale price at 83 bucks a square foot and applied it to the square footage. And we came up with a value of $1,062,951. Um, you'll notice that there is an easement value that I took into consideration. However, this parcel wasn't really, a, I was just looking at this before we started. Um, this parcel wasn't really affected by that easement because it's front Hawthorne Avenue and not Hennepin, which is where the easement was taking place. So I have my original requested value of $866,951. However, since the easement value wouldn't be, uh, since the easement wouldn't affect the value of this property, um, we would accept the a million sixty two thousand nine hundred and fifty one dollars. Uh, can you repeat that number again? Uh, one million sixty two thousand nine hundred and fifty one dollars. That would equate to the eighty three dollars a square foot. Thank you. Uh, do you have additional comments on this property? Uh, no, sir. OK, uh, are there any questions from the uh, questions or comments from the board uh, regarding uh, 1025 Hawthorne Avenue. Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, item number 11, 1022 Hennepin Avenue, case number 20BH-0056. Again, the applicant is a representative of Minneapolis City Parking, LLC. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Daniel Willard for 1022 Hennepin Avenue. Uh, so it's the same thing as the last case. Um, however, this parcel fronts Hennepin Avenue, uh, which was subject to an easement. 
Uh, again, the, the two parcels across Hawthorne Avenue were sold for $83 a square foot. This parcel using that sale price per square foot would indicate a value of $1,612,504. However, since the easement would impact the value of this parcel because there's essentially no, there is no access to this parcel off of Hennepin Avenue anymore because of the uh, bus line that was put in, the, it would surely impact the value of the parcel overall. So what we did, what I did was I allocated the easement value originally across the four parcels, but it should be the three parcels that were impacted by the easement. So I recalculated it real quick while we were on the phone here. And that means an additional $350,121 should be deducted from the $1.6 million value shown. So our revised requested value is $1,262,000. $383 utilizing the $83 a square foot for the land and then deducting a prorated value of the easement um, for, for the bus line. Uh, thank you. I, I, I um, would like for you to repeat the dollar value that you're you're looking at. Uh, you read it through rather yeah. quickly. Yep. So our requested, our our concluded requested value will be one million two hundred sixty-two thousand three hundred eighty-three dollars. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Uh, questions or comments uh, from the board members, please. Okay, uh, Mr. Willard, uh, seeing none, uh, we we are going to uh, go straight through for the first two items in the uh, the next time period, just to allow you to get off the phone earlier. Um, okay. We'll pull that item up here. Um, item number 12, 1014 Hennepin Avenue, case number 20BH-0057. The applicant is a representative of Minneapolis City Parking, LLC. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Daniel Willard for 1014 Hennepin Avenue. Uh, just as the previous parcel, uh, this parcel was also subject to an easement agreement. Um, so again, applying the sale price of the two parcels across the Hawthorne Avenue of $83 a square foot, uh, the indicated value is $972,564. Um, however, I allocated a value of $211,171 for the easement value. And our revised requested value for this parcel is $761,393. $761,393. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any additional uh, comments by by you, Mr. Willard? No, sir. OK, thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from board members? Uh, seeing none, item number 13, 1000 Hennepin Avenue, case number 20BH-0058. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Willard. Uh, please state your name and address for the record and present your appeal to the board. Daniel Willard for 1000 Hennepin Avenue. Uh, this is the last parcel that makes up the uh, parking lot, the Orpheum parking lots downtown. Uh, again, the current assessment at $96.90 a square foot. We are requesting $83 a square foot, which would indicate a value of $3,402,166. Again, uh, this parcel was impacted by the easement um, to put in the, the new bus line along Hennepin Avenue. Uh, so I allocated $738,707 to, to deduct from the assessment, which our revised requested value would be $2,663,400, I'm sorry, $2,663,459. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Our, um, Again, I'll ask for uh, questions or comments for board members. Um, 
I see none at the present time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Willard, and uh, you will be notified in writing uh, after uh, after our board adjourns. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Yep, thank you. So uh, we will be, we have some time before the 11 o'clock. We will uh, uh, consider and act on those appeals from the uh, 10 to 11 time period. Uh, item number three is appeal for 1011 Humboldt Avenue North, case number 20BH-0048. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? I do, I do not have uh, any questions, uh, Chair. I do have a motion to sustain the value uh, of 1011 Humboldt Avenue North at 205,000. Um, thank you. Do we have a second? Or a second, Reed. It has uh, been moved by Havig, seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $205,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havig. Aye. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson. Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Um, item number four, appeal for 2217 Jackson Street, case number 20BH-0049. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? Seeing none, uh, is there a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I make a motion to sustain the value of 2217 Jackson Street uh, of uh, $327,000. Second, uh, Reed. Thank you. Uh, it has been moved by Havoc and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market, market value at $327,000. Clerk, will you call the roll on the motion? Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havoc. Aye. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson. Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number five, appeal for 2359 McKinley Street, case number 20BH-0050. Are there any questions or discussions from board members re related to this property? Seeing none, is there a motion? Uh, board member Reed. Yes, I would move to sustain the value of uh, 365,000 at 2359 McKinley Street, Northeast. Thank you, is there a second? Second, Havig. Thank you. Uh, it has been moved by Reed and seconded by Havig to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $365,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havig. Aye. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson. Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item number six is the appeal for 1606 Mount Curve Avenue, case number 20BH-0051. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, Mr. Board Chair, this is having, uh, my, my uh, chat is not working, so I'm sorry if I'm jumping in here. Um, uh, I'm, I, I had my assistant pull it up because I'm, I'm working off of my telephone and it says 1606 Mount Curve closed at um, 
1,000,050, and I can't see if that was both properties uh, combined. Uh, I, I believe it was. I, I checked um, previously, and that's what I showed as well. Okay. Uh, and from the discussion from the uh, applicant, uh, the way that it was worked out, even uh, was that uh, fifty thousand was paid for the lot cash, and a million was put on a loan for the uh, the main property, and uh, originally paid eight hundred thousand for the structure at sixteen oh six and two fifty for the lot at or the carriage house at sixteen oh four, but had to rework it in order to get get lending on it. OK. Um, well, um, I, I'm I've, I'm familiar with the property and I'm familiar with the street, uh, so I would make a motion to uh, reduce the taxes on on both pieces. I don't know how you do it. Do you do it one at a time? One one at a time. OK, so um, I guess that I would make a motion for 1606 mile curve to go from uh, from one million six forty eight to uh, eight hundred thousand for the property at sixteen oh six Mount Curve Avenue. Do we have a second? Read second. OK, it has uh, been moved by Havig and seconded by Reed to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $800,000. Uh, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havoc. Aye. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson. Uh, nay. We have two ayes, one nay, and two absent. The motion passes. Thank you. Um, Item number seven, appeal for 1604 Mount Curve Avenue, case number 20BH-0052. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, this is Havig again. I just tried to put in my chat and it didn't go. It went to another screen to, to do okay. something. Uh, but um, again, I'm familiar with this uh, parcel, and uh, it's a garage uh, on the on the on the same driveway. So I am making a motion uh, to reduce the assessed value uh, of 1604 Mount Curve Avenue to 250,000. Thank you. Is there a second? Or, or comments from board member Reed? Uh, I wanted to comment. Go ahead. Yeah, I did want to comment, um, Mr. Havoc. Uh, he described it, it is a carriage house versus a, uh, a garage. So it's more than a, a garage there. It's a potential living space. So I would, I mean, I would move to a slight increase to 250,000. Uh, th that is what uh, he he's made the motion for. For two hundred and fifty thousand. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, I would think a little. I I would say three hundred thousand is more reasonable. Oh, okay. Um, I will. I'll amend my. That's good comment. Uh, it is a. It is a carriage house. Um, uh, or a or an, a structure that could be used. So I'll amend my motion to lower the tax value of 1604 Mount Curve Avenue to 300,000. Is there a second? Uh, I don't have a second yet. Uh, board member Reed, you might be muted. Board member Reed. Uh, 
Did we lose the connection? Mr. Mr. Chair, we're checking. If you would, okay. if we would just pause for a minute. Mr. Chair, Board Member Reed did drop off the call, so we'll need to take a pause until she okay. returns to the meeting. Thank you. Thanks. Am I back on? You are, thank you. Oh, I was disconnected and then I was locked out, so I had to reboot. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to reduce or decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $300,000 for 1604 Mount Curve Avenue. Uh, is there a second? Second, Karen. Thank you, it's been moved by Havig and seconded by Reed to decrease the 2020 estimated market value of uh, to three hundred thousand dollars clerk i'll ask you to call the roll on the motion board member bland is absent board member havoc aye board member reed aye board member tinker is absent chair anderson aye with three ayes and two absent the motion passes thank you uh item number eight uh Appeal for 5030 Woodlawn Boulevard, case number 20BH-0053. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, this is Havig. Um, do you, do you have, Chair, do you have any comments as you're the one that was in the property and knows the neighborhood? Uh, I do. Uh, the uh, he made a very accurate uh, comment about that. It's very difficult to assess or appraise a, a property like that, being it is very unique. Uh, it sits on a, a, a small uh, bluff or hill uh, above Lake Nokomis, uh, seasonal views of the lake, and it, it's a one of a kind property. Um, the only uh, negative that I can see is uh, there has not been a ton of updating to the property and uh, um, and the and the appraisal was done for a refinance as as opposed to a, a purchase. Um, I would look at either sustaining the value or uh, a reduction that's in between the amount. Uh Chair Anderson, I would make a motion to sustain the value uh, at 5030 Woodlawn Boulevard at 1,121,500. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Reed. It has been moved by Havig and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $1,121,500. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havoc. Aye. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson. Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item number nine, appeal for 518 3rd Avenue Northeast, case number 20BH-0054. Are there any questions or discussion from board members related to this property? I only have one comment. I don't have enough detail or know the neighborhood in Northeast uh, to, to know the difference in the value from 411,500 to 444,500. Can, can you comment on that? 
I'm quite familiar with the area. I've sold several properties up there in the last two years, uh, probably close to eight. Um, and the market up there is very brisk, so a property sitting on the market for that length of time up there is way outside the norm. Um, so uh, obviously where it started and the length of time for it to sell, I believe what they paid for it would be an accurate uh, uh, idea of what the property is worth. And could you clarify sale price, please? Uh, sale price was 380000 in August of 2019, closed in August of 2019. Purchase agreement was in, I believe, in June. Okay. Well, I will make a motion to reduce the assessed value of uh, the property at 518 Third Avenue Northeast to 380000 Do Wait I have a second? second? Thank you. It has been moved by uh, Havig and seconded by Reed to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $380,000. I will ask the uh, clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havig? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 10, appeal for 1025 Hawthorne Avenue, case number 20BH-0055. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? This is uh, one of four uh, contiguous properties that were presented in, in succession here by Mr. Willard. This is Reed, I have a question. Go ahead. My just to uh, I, my chat has also stopped working, so um, I just had wanted a clarification on all these. If, um, it looks like there was there were several court cases, and I'm not sure what that has to do with what we're discussing here. Is there any? Was that regarding the easement, or I, I believe those were regarding easements. Okay, identify the easements. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, does this fall under the same category as we discussed yesterday with we don't have enough information uh, to uh, work on these evaluations correctly and we should be passing them on to the county? Is it, is the, do these four properties fall under that same category that we worked with yesterday? Uh, I believe they do uh, and also a bit beyond the scope of our expert expertise. Um, okay. So, I agree. This is Reed. Thank you. Okay. Well, then I guess that we should just um, make a motion on these on these four properties to sustain and and hopefully have them move on to Hennepin County Tax Court. Uh, uh, we'll need to do them individually here. All right. So, property address. Whoop! I'm into the next uh, next one here. So we started off with 1025 Hawthorne Correct. Avenue. Correct. Uh, uh, assessed value, I'm looking at uh, 1,490,800. Is that what I'm looking at? Correct. Uh, I moved to sustain the value of 1,490,800 for the property address at 1025 Hawthorne Avenue. Second read. It has been moved by Havig and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $1,490,800. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havig? Aye. Board member Reed? Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item number 11, appeal for 1022 Hennepin Avenue, case number 20BH-0056. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Again, I think this falls under the same category that we are not qualified to make the value judgment on property 1022 Hennepin Avenue. 
So I make the motion to sustain the value of 1022 Hennepin Avenue at 1,936,800. Second, Reed. Thank you. It has been moved by Havig and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 assessed market value at $1,936,800. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havig. Aye. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson. Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, we have a little bit more time. Uh, item number 12, appeal for 1014 Hennepin Avenue, case number 20BH-0057. This uh, again is one of those the four contiguous properties in downtown. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? See none. Go ahead with the motion. Uh, 1014. Uh, board member Reed, would you take that? I'm looking for that sure. file. <laughs> I move to sustain the value of 1,453,100 at 1014. Uh, you're, um, Is that correct? Oh, yes, you are. Okay, I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I, I move to sustain the value at 1014 Hennepin Avenue. At, uh, again, repeat the dollar amount. Uh, at 1,453,100. Thank you. Uh, it has been moved by Reed and seconded. Oh, excuse me, I, uh, I'm calling for a second here. Uh, second, Havig. Okay, it has been moved by Reed and seconded by Havig to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at one million four hundred fifty three thousand one hundred dollars i will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion board member bland is absent board member havoc aye board member reed aye board member tinker is absent chair anderson aye with three ayes and two absent the motion passes item number 13 appeal for 1000 hennepin avenue case number 20bh-0058 are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Again, commercial out of our scope. Um, I, I make the motion to sustain the value of 1000 Hennepin Avenue at 4,271,900. Thank you. Second, Reed. It has been moved by Havig and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020. Uh, estimated market value at four million two hundred seventy one thousand nine hundred dollars uh, i will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion board member bland is absent board member havoc aye board member reed aye board member tinker is absent chair anderson aye with three ayes and two absent the motion passes great thank you uh, we will uh, proceed to uh, the new business uh, uh, call in hearings from 11 a.m. till noon. Uh, we have eight appeals scheduled. Uh, we have already heard two of them, so we have six remaining. We will proceed in case order as listed on the agenda. When your case is called, the applicant will be given five minutes to present the appeal. The board will consider and take action after hearing these cases if time allows, or at the end of the day after the hearing all the cases. If you, uh, if your phone is muted, please press star six to unmute. Property owners will be notified of our decision by mail after the board has adjourned. Uh, item number uh, 14 is 446 St. Anthony Parkway, case number 20BH-0059. The applicant is re representative of AZZ Acquire Company. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. You'll have five minutes. Yes, Austin Glidewell uh, for the applicant. Thank you. Uh, uh, property address, please. Uh, property address is 446 St. Anthony Parkway, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thank you. Go ahead with your appeal. 
Okay. Um, first question I want to ask the uh, the board is if uh, you have a copy of our evidence packet. I just want to make sure that's in front of you. Yeah, yes, we have it. Okay. Um, well, then I will um, just kind of briefly go through um, our evidence packet that we uh, presented. Um, first thing is first is I kind of want to give a short description of the property. Uh, what the property is is a galvanizing plant. They do um, various uh, galvanizing projects, um, mainly uh, just metal coating for steel fabrication. Um, and so the, um, if you ever were to walk inside one of these buildings, um, these buildings are they're more of like an accelerated, depreciated uh, type building because of the work that goes on in there. Um, there's a lot of wear and tear that occurs at these buildings. That's probably why um, the improvement value is pretty low on this building. Um, but nonetheless, I uh, wanted to give you kind of just an overview of what the building is and what they use it for. Um, the, um, going through our packet, um, you can kind of see um, through the, on, starting on page four, there's kind of a map overview of where this property is located in the area. Um, and then the next following pages, uh, there's just a couple uh, GIS maps that kind of show the parcel outline. Um, but on page seven, we present a cost approach. Um, as I mentioned before, the improvements are, are fairly low, so we don't really have as much of an issue with the improvements, although I think we could have made an argument that the improvements are probably depreciated beyond this value. Um, but um, we're really focused on the land value for this uh, particular case. Uh, page eight um, of our evidence packet, we present um, some sales, and that bleeds over to page nine. There's six total land sales. Um, the subject property's land value is just over $5 at $5.20 a square foot. Uh, we found various um, land sales um, that we thought were comparable to the subject property um, throughout the general area uh, that range after adjustments from anywhere from uh, $5 down to, uh, you know, an average about $3 to $4 kind of range uh, for, the, um, for land. Um, land sale number one came to an adjustment just over $4.20. Uh, land number two is just over $5. Uh, land sale number three at $4. Land sale number uh, four at $4.16. And land sale number five at $3.61. Um, and then land sale number six, there, there's a big adjustment um, down to 50 cents a square foot. But that one's probably the least comparable out of the six. But um, but the average, nonetheless, uh, that we came up with based on these land sales were just over, uh, were just uh, $3.59 a square foot. So we do feel like based on land sales in the area um, that there, there is room for an adjustment on the land um, for this property. Um, in page 10, we provide the uh, COSTA reports for all those land sales. Um, and then the detailed pages that follow after that. Um, that go throughout basically the rest of our packet. So, um, you, you know, this is, it's a pretty simple uh, case and argument on, on from the taxpayer standpoint. Um, again, uh, we feel like the land is probably slightly overvalued, and given the uh, land sales in the area, we feel like an adjustment can be made on, on the land. And, um, and you can see on page 24 um, kind of our uh, requested value based on the land sales um, and an adjustment that could be made there. Um, and um, that kind of concludes uh, our overview of our, our evidence. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, are there any uh, questions or discussions from board members? No, thank you, Mr. Gladwell. Uh, we, we have uh, no questions at this time. Uh, we'll move on to item number 15. 2311. Uh, please, please wait till you're called. Um, item number 15, 2311 Pillsbury Avenue, case number 20BH-0060. The applicant is a re representative of MNR Inc. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Uh, Mr. Chair, the caller has yet to, um, the applicant has yet to call in. Oh, okay. Uh, for this for this case, I don't believe the applicant is in the queue. Um, excuse me, sorry. This is Austin Glass from the previous one. I, I believe this is also uh, um, the oh. case that I'm presenting as well. Oh, thank you. Okay. Excuse me. And this is for 2311 Pillsbury. 
Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so I'll state my name again. Austin Glidewell for the applicant. Address is 2311 Billsbury Avenue, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thank you. Oh, please go ahead with your appeal. Okay. And uh, same question as before. Just want to make sure that the board members have a copy of our evidence packet. Uh, yes, we do. Okay. Um, so I'll preference uh, this particular appeal with um, kind of giving a description of this property as well. Um, this particular property is being used as a nursing facility. It's a licensed nursing facility. So even though it looks like a residential property, um, and it is technically a residential property, um, it's being used as a uh, nursing facility, um, mainly for elderly um, uh, care. Um, and so there's, there's a small group of elderly individuals that live in the home and there's uh, full-time nursing staff um, that takes care of them in these homes and this is a licensed nursing home. Um, so, however, uh, given the fact that this is a residential property, uh, we feel like the best way to come to a conclusion of what the value might be on this property is to look at the sales in the neighborhood because technically um, if the business operation of the nursing home were to leave this facility, uh, this could fairly easily be converted back into a regular residential home and be sold as such. Um, and, and likewise, uh, many of the homes up and down the street and in this direct neighborhood uh, could be converted into a nursing home if they were to get licensed that way. So uh, we feel like looking at the sales in the neighborhood of other residential properties are uh, the, the best way to conclude what the value is. Um, I'll skip ahead to page seven of our evidence packet. Um, we, we present three sales um, of residential properties in the neighborhood. Um, that have occurred over the last uh, year or so. Um, and um, I want to preference on page seven, uh, sale number one and sale number two are, um, are residential properties that are two doors apart from the subject property on both sides. So sale number one is two doors down. Um, if you're staring at the property, it's two doors down to the left. And then uh, sale number two is two doors down to the right if you're looking at the property. And then sale number three is one street over uh, of, the, of the subject property. So all three of these sales are like a stone throw away from the subject property. They're right there, same exact neighborhood. Um, sale number one, um, and I'll preference this by saying too, the subject property was valued on a square foot basis at $144 a square foot. Um, Sale number one after you know, before adjustments were was at $106 a square foot. After adjustments, $101 a square foot. So it sold for much less on a square foot basis. Uh, sale number two, um, again same street as the subject. Um, it sold at $138.29 before adjustments, um, and after adjustments, $141 a square foot. Again, less than what the subject is valued on the tax roll for. Um, and then sale number three, just one street over um, the neighboring uh, street. Um, it sold at $112 a square foot after adjustments were down to $111 a square foot, much less than the subject property. So again, looking at all three of these sales, which are extremely close to the subject, um, there, there's evidence that these residential properties are selling for less than what the subject property is, is valued at. And so Given that evidence, um, you know, any taxpayer would look at their, their, their home or their property and say, well, if, if the sales are supporting less, why is my property valued higher? Um, and so that's why we're presenting these three sales uh, to give you an idea of um, you know, what the actual sales are in the neighborhood to show that the sales actually are lower. Um, and then the following page on page eight is just an overview of where those comps are compared to the subject. And then page nine through the remaining of our packet are the sales of the, of the properties. Um, again, two of them are on the same street and one's one street over. So they're, they're similar properties, same neighborhood. Um, and then page 15 of our packet is kind of the summary of, um, of our evidence based on the sales. Uh, we feel like a value of um, 1155000 um, is more appropriate for, for this, this property. So, um, and that's kind of it in conclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions from board members or comments, discussion?
Uh, seeing none, uh, thanks for your time, Mr. Gladwell. Uh, you and your client will uh, be notified in writing. Uh, I don't know what who, who made that comment or what it was about. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll sign off. Thanks. Okay. Uh, the next uh, item is item number 16. Yes, excuse me. Hello? Hello. Uh, uh, um, uh, please, uh, uh, all the people, please mute until your name is called. Uh, item number 16, 4816 Nicollet Avenue, case number 20BH-0061. The applicant is a representative of DO Management. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Good morning. My name is Deirdre Gentilizzo. The address is 4816 Nicollet Avenue in Minneapolis. Um, I am the owner of the building and I am petitioning to have my tax valuation lowered because the building is in a very unique situation. The building is zoned residential and taxed commercial. Um, so my request is that you would lower the amount to be more in keeping with how the building can be used. I purchased the building in 2017 for $455,000. It was valued at that time for $450,000. Um, given the real estate climate at that time and how long it was on the market, which was quite a long time, um, I feel like that was a very reasonable value for the building at that time. Um, upon purchasing the building, I petitioned the city um, to continue the non-conforming use permit for the building so that a business could do business in the building. Um, it, that permit has been granted to my understanding um, for previous tenants as well. Um, I was granted the permit with some fairly strict stipulations on what kind of business and how many people we could have in and out of the building. Um, in 2019, I petitioned to have the, um, the building valuation lowered back um, to a more reasonable um, amount because it had been raised quite significantly. Um, and I was granted that petition. Um, and um, I believe this building just requires a unique consideration given that um, I'm being taxed commercially, but many, many commercial businesses should not be in the building and conform to the non-conforming use um, stipulations. Um, so I'm very limited on to whom I can rent um, inside that building. And um, so I and the other two small businesses that work in the building would appreciate your support of our businesses and understanding and lower the value um, that would then in turn lower our tax value. Um, and I thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions or comments from board members? Uh, um, could you please clarify how, ma how many uh, commercial spaces are in the bu building? and uh, 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 how many are occupied? Um, the building currently has myself, I work in the building, um, and two other tenants within the building. Um, so basically three commercial spaces. Okay. Um, and our non-conforming use permit requires that all those businesses not have um, regular foot traffic. Um, so that just the, we're very limited on the number of people we can have in and out of the building on a on a given day. Um, so it is and not, therefore it's not, hard to find. Not a regular retail establishment. It is not. It is no retail, um, and because um, because of this limit, um, I could have rented the space. It sat empty for over a year. One of the units um, because I was unable to rent it, and so many people wanted to rent from me but they had too much in and out, you know, they were massage therapists that had people in and out or psychologists or, you know, anybody that had regular appointments and people in and out of the building wouldn't fit 
um, and obviously a general retail, you know, open nine to five Monday through Friday or, you know, whatever the hours would be also not an acceptable use of the building. Um, according to the, the city um, non conforming use permit. OK, thank you. That's very helpful. Are there any other questions or comments from board members? Uh, see none. Uh, thank you for your for your time, Ms. Uh, Gentilizo. Thank you. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, no one uh, calling in for item number 17, so we'll proceed to item number 18. 4420 Fremont Avenue South, case number 20BH-0065. The applicant is Ronald Erickson. Please state your name and address for the record, and then you'll have five minutes to present your appeal to the board. My name is uh, Ron Erickson, 4420 Fremont Avenue South, Minneapolis. Thank you, sir. Uh, please go ahead. Okay, I, I live at 4420 Fremont. I've lived in this house for 40 years as it's a beautiful neighborhood, beautiful street. Um, but our house is, uh, it's 100 years old and it's one of the few remaining homes in our neighborhood that haven't uh, undergone a major renovation. Um, I've had uh, a, a realtor, Barry Berg, who sells a lot of homes in this area, look at this home and he sent you a letter indicating a fair market value of 1250 And the thing ab about our house is it does look nice on the outside, but it needs, uh, as he put in his letter, would inevitably want to make extensive upgrades to the home. And then I've included some comparables and I have many more. Um, one comparable and my house currently is is uh i think you have it at a million four uh three or something like that well there are no there aren't homes on our block that have sold for a million four and ours is actually one of the smaller homes on the street i mean considerably smaller than some of the other houses uh there's a, a comparable at the end of the block that uh sold for a million three ninety eight but that house is on the Rose Gardens, has a great view of the lake, and had a major uh, uh, addition on the back of it, but done by T Architects. And I think I included that as a um, as a comp. And I've tried to get comps, uh, Barry Burke had some comps around, but I've tried to get comps that are right, right by us. So here's one two doors away that's on the market. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's on the market for 1249000 and it's uh, maybe it's 800 square feet larger than ours, above ground floor square feet. It hasn't sold. Um, there's a house on that I mentioned in my letter. There's a house on the, uh, it's actually on right on Lake Harriet. It's Dr. Nigerian's house, old house, and uh, it is 7,000 square feet. And it's a grand home, sits right on the lake there. It sold for a million four in 2017. And I do want to say that in this, in above the million dollar range, these houses have not gone up in value. I mean, I had a, I had an appraisal in my house from uh, the other realtor does a lot of things in this area in, 19, in 2002. And I, and I think it was, you know, in the same range that I'm talking about now. So, um, there's a uh, house across the street, uh, uh, two doors down. It sold uh, four years ago for a million one. It's probably uh, 6,000 square feet. So, uh, and our, but the main thing is our house, it, it hasn't had the major addition. And that house, all these houses, the other houses I'm talking to you have all had big additions. And there's not a record of houses on our block selling for a million four. So, I think the million two fifty actually I think is high, but that's I think what Barry Berg has stated is the value it should be, and that would be on the high side in my mind. Okay, thank you. Um, any uh, final comments before I open it up? No. To the board? Okay. No, that'd be fine. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yep. Uh, is there any, uh, any uh, discussion or questions uh, from the board? Uh, Havig, I have one question for the homeowner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you had indicated that you have not done any major renovation. Have you done renovation in the property uh, within the last 10 years? No, I mean, uh, just maintenance. I have not done maintenance in not in the last 10 years, no. Okay, have you, have you done updated kitchens and baths since you've owned the property? I have updated the bathrooms and I have updated the kitchen since I've owned the property. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. But that was more than to, to ready to be upgraded again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did an 85 or <laughs> something like that. Okay. Uh, I, I I have been in uh, the house at the end of the block, uh, so I'm familiar with that. So the, the one the one the one that uh, I referenced that was a million three ninety eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. yeah. I mean, that's a that's a beautiful, and I don't want to take it. You know, this is one of the most beautiful blocks. I mean, I'm not. That's why I live here. But it's it's like I say, the what people perceive and what really is happening are two different things. And I certainly couldn't get a million four out of my house when that one sold for a million three ninety eight. So and then the one across the streets at the same is at a million two fifty asking price and it's sitting there. You know, so and it's larger. OK, OK, uh, um, but thank you so much for yep. your consideration. Uh, are there any other questions from board members? Uh, seeing none, we'll move on to the next case. Um, oh. Item number, uh, th thank you for your time, Mr. Erickson. Uh, we'll move on to item number 19, 5115 Chicago Avenue. Case number 20BH-0066. The applicant is Gay Massey. Please state your name and address for the record, and, and then you'll have five minutes to present your appeal to the board. Go ahead. Press star six if you've been muted. Good morning, this is uh, Gay Massey, um, and I am um, making an appeal for my property at 5115 Chicago Avenue South in Minneapolis. Um, I provided a copy of a February 2020 um, appraisal for the property, and I hope you all have that. Um, oh, we do. Thank you. Good. Thank you. The, the property is a duplex. It's a um, two side-by-side -side units each around. 974 square feet each, two bedroom, one bath. There is um, there are rooms in the basement. We have uh, created a laundry room down there, and there's a utility room. There are also other rooms that um, bathroom and bedroom space is currently not used and needs to be renovated um, if we were going to rent that out. Um, we purchased the property in, I purchased the property in November of 2018 for $570,000. Um, the, the 2020 assessment is for $642,500. Um, I did a refinance earlier this year and had this appraisal that you have done. Um, where it and it sets out information about um, comparable properties in the area, and it assessed the appraised the value of the property at six hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. And I wanted to request uh, that the board um, review this and consider lowering the twenty twenty assessment. I think the um, the Value the six hundred and fifteen thousand dollar value of the um, independent appraiser is a fair reflection of the value of the property. It represents a pretty significant increase in value since the time of my purchase, which is just about a year and a half. So, um, um, wanted to answer any questions you had about that. 
um, if you look on page two or three of the appraisal, it shows the comparisons with the other similar properties. Um, the updating we've done, that have done since purchase, was around um, electrical problems identified in the um, inspection and the location of a nicer laundry room in the basement. Um, and then things like paint and um, to make the upstairs spaces look nicer. Okay. Uh, so, do you have any additional comments before questions? No, no, no. You can go to questions. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. I, I was uh, in your property when it was for sale, so I'm very familiar with uh, that property. Uh, it was there's uh, a lot of dated issues with bathrooms and kitchens and things like that. Yeah, I don't think uh, it's ever been upgraded since it was built. Have you remodeled those uh, since moving in? I'm sorry. Did I remodel? So yeah, saying? remodel the kitchens or bathrooms since moving in. No, we put in new refrigerators in each kitchen because they were um, really not in good shape. And we upgraded the electrical throughout the house. Um, and then we created a laundry room and put in two washers and dryers in the basement. Okay. Um, but, and we painted mm -hmm. um, and cleaned, you know. Um, we, we did... Some things like we put new, um, what do you call them, the, the handles on the cabinet in one oh, of the right, units. Right. Okay. And we, th things like, little things like that. Um, oh. And it, it made a big difference in how it looked. So it's nice space. And with the electrical upgrades, you know, it's safe. Um, mm -hmm. The downstairs right now is really not usable unless we invest quite a bit more money in it to get that in shape for um, someone to rent, but that has not been renovated. Um, and then we've done things outside that the inspector has required, you know, I, like putting up new gates and stuff like that. Okay, uh, thank you. I have one other question. Uh, there was some discussion of a lot split. Uh, has that ever occurred? No, I think that was the higher owner's way to try and get a higher price. Okay. Nobody bought that separate lot. You wouldn't buy a house if something, the lot right between you and the street was, the, if the front yard was a different lot, essentially. Okay. So that did not happen. Okay, thank you. Uh, do any of the other board members have questions or comments uh, for Ms. Massey? Um, see, seeing none uh, or hearing none, uh, thanks for your time and you will be notified in writing of our decision after adjournment. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 20, uh, 2726 Colfax Avenue South, case number 20BH-0067. Um, the applicant is a representative of K.I. Colfax or K.L. Colfax, LLC. Please state your name and address for the record and uh, you'll have five minutes to present your appeal to the board. Hi, uh, my name is Matthew Keelis. Uh, my brother and I own the property we have for several years. My current home address is 5500 River Bluff Drive, Wilmington, Minnesota 55437. Um, uh, this is in reference to 2726 Colfax Avenue South. It is a fourplex in Minneapolis. Uh, it is a nice fourplex, nice block. Um, I do have uh, three comparisons for you that um, that I sent your way. Hopefully you have that. Um, we do. This is based on tax value and the three comparisons. 2507 Lindale Avenue South um, is a slightly smaller footprint, um, but it is a true fourplex um, and it's a true brownstone building which um, my property is was a single family house that was chopped up and not as desirable as a <clears throat> as true fourplexes are um, but that one is also in the same neighborhood um, the other 
unit is uh, 2519 Lindale Avenue South. Um, that's a five unit building, um, which is, again, a slightly smaller square footage value, but it does have an extra unit in the, in the property. Um, both, both of which are valued over $100,000 less than, than my property here. Um, the, the third comp I have is uh, just one, one block west. 2726 DuPont Avenue South, also a, a true fourplex. Um, and that one also has a, uh, a four four car garage, I believe, in the back as well. Um, and that one is, like I said, one block to the west, which is valued, um, I think it's 600, uh, again, close to 100,000 less in my property. Um, so that being said, I, I think I'm I'm just for some reason I'm valued a lot higher than 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 should be over there. So that's that's really all I have for that. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kilas. Uh, uh, one thing uh, I'll ask you to stay on the line and we'll hear your case for 2400 Lindale. Uh, rather than uh, having you call back in. Uh, sure. But uh, first we'll have questions for, uh, for Mr. Kilas on 2726 uh, Colfax Avenue South. Uh, board members, do you have any questions? Um, I, I have, uh, again, it's, uh, uh, you have a, a fourplex, so it's a, uh, conversion from a single family home. Can you yeah. describe describe to me the number of bedrooms and bathrooms per unit? Um, they each have two two bedrooms, one bath per unit. And uh, where are they located in the property? Uh, there's two on the first floor and two on the second floor. Uh, is there a third floor that's utilized or a lower level that's utilized? Uh, no, nothing in the, well, there's a, there was a laundry room in the lower in the basement. Um, otherwise, there's one, there's one room up on the third floor. Okay. Um, and otherwise, that's, that's it. There's, at, there's a lot of attics, empty attic space up there, okay. which isn't utilized. Okay. Um, do any of the other board members have questions um, for Mr. Kilas? Uh, hearing none, we'll we'll move on to item number 21, 2400 Lindale Avenue South, case number 20BH-0068. The applicant is a representative of KI or KL2400 LLC. Please state your name and address for the record, and uh, you'll have five minutes to present your appeal to the board. Uh, yes, again, it's Matthew Kielis, K-I-E-L-A-S, and it's for KI 2400 Lindale Avenue South. Uh, my address is 5500 River Bluff Drive from Bloomington, 55437. Um, this is representing 2400 Lindale Avenue South. Uh, again, my brother and I own 50% of the property. Um, or, well, we own it together, I guess. I own 50, he owns 15%. Um, this is a nine unit apartment building uh, right on the corner of 24th and Lindale. I did um, show uh, two other counts in the neighborhood um, with uh, a lot lower less value than my property, which I believe are pretty comparable properties. Um, First of all, this sits right on the corner of 24th and Lindale. Um, it, it's, a, it's a pretty loud corner. It's busy, and there's actually a, a bus stop that's right outside my corner that gets a lot of traffic and unfortunately a lot of undesirable traffic. And because of that bus stop, we also lost a lot of uh, parking this last year right along that street. The parking is pretty limited especially being right on Lindale Avenue. 
Um, the, the loud bus stop makes it a little difficult to rent those, those units, especially the ones facing that corner. Um, in your case, uh, I do have two comps. Uh, one is 3436 Lindale Avenue South. Um, it's also a brick building in the same neighborhood. It has a uh, assessed value of 1.124 1 for taxes payable in 2020 and 1.180 1 for taxes payable in 2021. Um, slightly smaller building square footage, but there's more rental square footage, meaning my property has some, some wasted space in the, in the building. Um, it's, they're currently just storage closets that aren't being utilized at all. Um, uh, the other, the 3436 uh, also has, uh, I think it's on a nicer block, has a really good curb appeal. There's more parking in the back. Um, the other comp was 900 West 25th Street, also a brick building in the same neighborhood. Has an assessed value of, of 1.2 for taxes payable in 2020, 1.26 for taxes payable in 2021. Um, like I said, so, uh, this one also has slightly smaller square footage, but has roughly about the same amount of rentable square feet. Um, like I said, my property has some wasted space in the basement. Um, uh, this one is also on a it's on a quieter block, and it has one extra rental unit than mine does. Um, and this one also sits on the uh, right across the street from a park, making it much easier to rent than than my property is. Um, that's about all I have for that property. Any thank, thank you, Mr. Kilos. Uh, um open for any discussion or questions from board members. Um, I'll start with one question. Uh, your property, um, can you describe to me again the number of garage and parking spaces that you have there? Yeah, there's there's no garage, no garages at all. And there are six parking spots in the back. Six off street parking spots. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, yeah, and uh, is this a uh, true four fourplex two on the main floor, two up, or is it a conversion as well? Oh, I'm sorry, this is a nine nine unit. Oh, nine unit, yeah. excuse me. OK, yeah. Um, so the, the two comps I gave, um, uh, the 3436 um, is a 11 unit, and okay. the 900 West 25th Street is a 10 unit. OK, uh, thank you. Yep, yeah, the, are, are these are, are yours two bedroom units or one bedroom units? Um, I've got five two bedrooms and four one bedroom units. Actually, the, the four it's actually three one bedroom and one efficiency. I'm not okay. sure why that got smart, but. Uh, do any of uh, the exterior of your property is, is it brick? Or stuck? Brick, yeah. Okay. It's brick, yep. And the two comps I gave are also brick. So okay, same. that's helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions from board members? Um, Hearing none, uh, thanks for your time, Mr. Kilos. Uh, you'll be notified in writing after adjournment uh, of the, the committee. OK, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, bye -bye. OK, we will. Um, review. Um, The uh, starting with item 14, the appeal for 446 St. Anthony Parkway, case number 20BH-0059. Um, are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property?
Uh, Mr. Chair, I have one question. Uh, does th does this fall into our our are not able to uh, value the taxation because it's a commercial building purview? Um, that is a good question. I would tend to agree with that. So it's it's actually in the owner's favor for us to sustain the value and let him move on. I believe so. Yes. OK, I'll make a motion to, to sustain the value of 446 St. Anthony Parkway at one million five hundred and one thousand five hundred. Second read. Thank you. Um, I, it has been moved by Havoc and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $1,501,500. We'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havoc? Aye. Board member Reed? Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item number 15, the appeal for 2311 Pillsbury Avenue, case number 20BH-0060. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Again, uh, this is Havig. I would ask the question if this is, again, uh, not our expertise. Uh, and it's better for the home for the owner to, to go to court, uh, the Hennepin County. Does this fall under that purview? Uh, it depends whether we want to look at it as uh, the applicant suggested as a single family and compare it to such, or if we add in the uh, elder care facility, nursing home uh, uh, discussion, I think that may be beyond our expertise. Um, well, the, el the elder home um, component would add value to it because it's an income producing property. So I would make a motion to sustain the value of 2311 Pillsbury Avenue for the market value of 1,417,500. Second read. Thank you. I have a, a move or excuse me. It has been moved to uh, by Havoc and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value uh, at $1,417,500. Uh, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havoc? Aye. Board member Reed? Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 16, uh, appeal for 4816 Nicollet Avenue, case number 20BH-0061. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, this is board member Havig. I think I've only got a comment uh, and I will uh, check with board member Reed on this. Um, I, I don't think that there was a case made to uh, not sustain the value. OK. Um, I, I agree. Uh, it, it's not clear uh, as far as zoning and how she's utilizing the property, so I would I would agree with that. Um, my, my opinion is that uh, the restrictions placed on her use of the property does limit uh, her potential for income and uh, she identified a, a long vacancy as well. Uh, I have owned similar property and experienced similar experience with uh, those sorts of restrictions uh, being very limiting in uh, income potential. Um, with that being said, um, is there a motion uh, from either either Board member. Well, I guess with that comment and there's income restrictions, I would make a motion to uh, lower the value from 481,500 to the 2019 assessed value of 450,000 for the property at 4816 Nicollet Avenue. Thank you. Is there a second? Second read. 
It has been moved by Havoc and seconded by Reed to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $450,000. We'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havoc? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. I, item 17, appeal for 4640 Ewing Avenue South, case number 20VH-0064. Uh, we did not hear from the home, homeowner on this one, but uh, they, uh, uh, they did purchase the property in April of, of 2020 for uh, four hundred fifteen thousand dollars, or four hundred fifteen two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Uh, no other information was provided by the homeowner. Are there any other questions or comments from board members? Chair uh, Anderson. Um, this is uh, Rebecca. Can I make a comment yeah. here? Yes, please. Um, we see that um, the uh, person representing this case did um, contact us in the time um, when we asked, and they weren't present. They weren't given the call-in information in time. I would just ask that you um, hold off on acting on this one until tomorrow to see if we can add them to tomorrow's schedule. Just since they weren't given the call information in time. Okay. Um, with with that being said, uh, uh, do we need a motion to, or can we just? Uh, I I can declare a continuance of this till till tomorrow. That's correct. You can just do what you okay. did yesterday with the cases. Correct. Okay. Uh, uh, with that discussion, we will uh, continue 4640 Ewing Avenue South uh, for the hearing tomorrow on 5-20-2020. Uh, for case number 20BH-0064. Moving on to item number 18, appeal for 4420 Fremont Avenue South, case number 20BH-0065. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, this is Reed. Uh, I would like to just comment that the comparables uh, seem appropriate from the real estate agent as well as the homeowner. And then we got more information about the condition and the size. Um, so I think a decrease is, is warranted. Uh, based on my uh, having seen two of the comparable properties, I would agree. I, I would as well, and I would make a motion to reduce the assessed value to 1,250,000 for the property at 4420 Fremont Avenue South. Second, Reed. It, uh, it has been moved by Havig and seconded by Reed to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to 1,250,000. We'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havig. Aye. Board member Reed. Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Um, item number 19, the appeal for 5115 Chicago Avenue, case number 20BH-0066. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Um, I have shown that property twice before it was sold. Uh, so I can verify that the uh, property was in need of a lot of updating. Uh, it sounds like the property per, uh, purchaser homeowner has, has done limited improvements to date. Uh, and uh, their appraisal of 615,000, I, I believe would be accurate, if not possibly a little high. Um, any other comments? I can agree uh, with Chair Anderson that that uh, a reduction should be in order uh, and I can make a motion 
uh, to reduce the value to the appraised value of 615,000 for the property address at 5115 Chicago Avenue. Thank Second, you. Reed. Thank you. Uh, it has been moved by Havig and seconded by Reed to decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $615,000. We'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Haddock? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Okay, um, we still have a little time here. Item number 20, appeal for 2726 Colfax Avenue South, case number 20BH-0067. Are there any questions? or discussion from board members related to this property. Uh, this is Havig. Um, I, 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 you know, I don't know what the condition of this property is, but uh, the wedge has been having good success in sales. Uh, and if this is a single family home rented by the bedrooms, uh, we don't know what the income approach is. So it's it's hard to make a, it's hard for me to make a decision on this. Um, well, I feel the property owner may have a case. Uh, they did not submit uh, a whole lot of information to make uh, a good comparison. Um, are there any other comments or questions? I would, this is Reed. I would uh, agree with um, Mr. Havick and Chairman. Um, also, um, it was converted to a fourplex, not just bedrooms. Uh, thank you. Um, without any more comments or questions, uh, is there a motion? I would make a motion to sustain the value of uh, of uh, 2726 Colfax Avenue South for the market value of 749,500. Second, Reed. It has been moved by Havig and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at 749,500. Uh, I will uh, ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havig? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Item number 21, the appeal for 2400 Lindale Avenue South, case number 20BH-0068. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, my comments are the same as the last one. While I feel that there's perhaps a justified reason for a reduction, uh, the home or the property applicant uh, failed to provide uh, enough information to make an adequate comparison. Um, uh, uh, any other questions or comments from board members? Uh, I, I have one that's an extremely uh, desirable building. So uh, I guess I would make the motion uh, to sustain the va market value of 1,543,000 uh, for the property address at 2400 Lindale Avenue South. Second, Reed. Thank you. Uh, it has been moved by Havoc and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 uh, estimated market value at $1,543,000. I will ask the clerk to call a roll on the motion. Oh. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havig? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, we'll continue on to uh, the new business. We have four appeals scheduled from 12 to 1230. My understanding is that those uh, callers are, are in the queue right now and we will proceed in case order as listed on the agenda. 
When your case is called, the applicant will be given five minutes to present the appeal. The board will consider and take action after hearing these cases. If time allows, or at the, at the end of the day after hearing all cases. If your phone is muted, please press pound six, or excuse me, star six to unmute. Uh, property owners will be notified of our decision by mail after the board has adjourned. Uh, we're starting with item number 22, 2348 Seabury Avenue, case number 20BH-0069. Uh, the applicant is Joseph Biernak. Uh, please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Hello, my Hello. name is Joseph. Joseph Burianic. Um, my home is at 2348 Seabury Avenue. Uh, my wife and I just purchased this as our first home back in November. Um, currently, the city for 2020 estimates the value of the house is $676,000. Uh, we purchased the house for $463,500. Um, so there's a big, uh, big discrepancy there. Um, if you look at the appraisal that I've included, um, which was uh, commissioned as part of the mortgage underwriting, um, on the page that says uniform residential appraisal report, uh, which is like the third page of the appraisal, Mm -hmm. um, it says in there that uh, the subject was listed for sale on October 4th for $490,000 and was reduced to a final list price of $450,000 and sold after 23 days. So they initially listed it for $490,000, um, were not able to sell it, and then eventually lowered it to $450,000. Um, and then the final price that we came to with the seller was $463,500. Um, if you go down a little further um, on that same page, you can see that there's, uh, I'll just read from it here, no updates in the prior 15 years. The overall condition and level of maintenance is average. There's been minimal updating over the years. Um, one of the things called out is that there's no shower in the only bathroom for that uh, allows you to bathe in. It's just a tub. Um, there's a hole in the wall behind the toilet in there from a previous leak, it looks like. Um, so I would ask the board to simply adjust the assessed value of our property to the uh, purchase price of our property um, from back in November. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, are there any questions or comments uh, from board members? Uh, just just to recap, you purchase or closed down the property in October, November of this last year. Yes, November fifteenth. And uh, um, I sold and been in several of your neighboring properties, but I haven't been in that property. Uh, mm -hmm. You described the condition of the bathroom. Uh, what is the condition of the rest of the house? The rest of the house is in okay shape. Um, the kitchen is quite dated. Um, we did a little bit of painting. Um, it all it has all its original windows, which are in dire need of some maintenance. Um, there's a double hung wooden windows. Um, it still has extensive knob and tube wiring. Um, that was uh, not updated over the years. There is a new electrical panel, but all the stuff feeding off of it is still all knob and tube. OK. Um, are, are there any other questions or comments from uh, board members? Uh, thank you for your time, Mr. Biernak. Uh, you'll be notified in writing after adjournment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number 23. 2544 Aldrich Avenue South, case number 20BH-0072. The applicant is Renee Hugmode. Hug Hug uh, please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Uh, my name is Pauline Hofood. 
Um, the building is 2544 Aldridge Avenue South. My address is 408 North 1st Street, Minneapolis. Um, we are currently valued at 715, which went up quite a bit last year. I did make an appeal last year and Leo Montez came out and looked at the building. We went through this whole thing. And now again this year, it's trying to go up to 772,000. This is an older fourplex. We're actually grandfathered in on uses. <laughs> so uh, our rents aren't that high because we can't put any, um, like we can't put washers and dryers in the units or things like that. And given the current rental landscape, um, I'm not sure how a value of a fourplex would go up right now because I'm already having trouble with tenants. Um, so that's my question. Like, I don't understand how when we went through this whole thing last year and Leo actually looked at all the units and all the stuff in the basement. And I mean, and now it's trying to go up another $60,000 again. Um, I can't speak to uh, that process. Yeah, I so. understand. Uh, uh. But, uh, you know, we have tenants that one apartment with two girls who are working in a restaurant and now they're moving home. A couple of the other people in the other units, one is working, one is not. So I'm not quite sure what's really going to happen when the $600 a week runs out. And I don't understand how rental property to, could be going up that much right now. I believe it was based on the average increases in all investment property uh, in that area last year. Right. Uh, um, but they're not all created equal. I understand that, and that's why we're here yeah. today. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, do you have any other additional uh, comments before? No. Okay. That is it. Um, I'll ask the, the board, uh, is there any discussion or questions from board members? Uh, I have, uh, you said your, is your uh, fourplex a converted uh, single family? Uh, I don't believe so. I wouldn't know though, because it's like from 1920. I mean, it's pretty okay. old. So, so can you describe the units and the location in the building to me? Yeah, there's two on each side um, and they're all two bedrooms with one bathroom. Um, there are wood floors. The kitchen is towards the is by the back door, so it's not open floor plan, which people seem to want these days. Mm -hmm. And the bedrooms are smaller. The dining room and the living room is just one big room. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there is there any finishing in the basement or if uh, third floor? Or is there any finishing up there? No, there is no third floor, and the basement just has laundry room and storage rooms. Okay. Um, Parking, uh, are there any garages or off street There's parking? two garages and one off street. That's not, that's just on a uh, cement. Pad. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions or comments from board members? Uh, seeing none, um, thank you for your time, um, Ms. Ms. Hoogland. And uh, okay. you'll be notified in writing after adjournment. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, item number 24, 4501 Washburn Avenue South, case number 20BH-0073. The applicant is Douglas Gordhammer. Please state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Uh, my name is Doug and my wife's name is Judy Gordhammer. We are at 4501 Washburn Avenue South in Minneapolis. Um, a little history on the two of us. We have lived in and raised two daughters in our 100 plus year old home for over 30 years. We love the neighborhood that we live in and we do not want to move. Um, we've been, been involved with our Linden Hills neighborhood community, helping to update our parks recommend stop signs for problem corners and maintain our property when the city expects us to do routine maintenance, removing trees, replacing sidewalks, things like that. We feel the $50,000 annual property tax increase is excessive considering our 100 year old balloon frame home has not gone through a major remodel. I have three examples. Um, 
why we would like to have an adjustment. And this, the first two are um, via the website Zillow. Our immediate neighbor at 4505 Washburn has completely gutted his home two years ago and added a 16 foot addition that covers all three levels, um, installed new utilities, and they now have a four bedroom, three bath, and it's listed on Zillow for $822,000. My other neighbor to the east of me at 4500 Vincent Avenue South has not gone through a major remodel and his three bedroom, one and a half bath um, is listed on Zillow for $507,600. Um, it was a bit difficult for me to find a similar duplex, but I did find one and I sent it in with my um, original application and that was at 3434 Grand Avenue South and that was listed at $479,900. Normally homes in my area when they sell are scraped to the ground after the sale. I have never contested a property tax assessment, but with recent developments with COVID-19, that has made me unemployed. I'm 63 years young, and I do not qualify for any of the city programs yet to help me out in my particular situation. It is our hope that the city will hold off on property tax increases until after I turn 66 and will be eligible for credits. We are also aware of the changes coming to our neighborhood in the 2040 plan and would consider help in reworking our property to accommodate additional city residents. But our concern is the cumulative effect of skewing the taxable value of our home based on new construction in the neighborhood will end our ability to age in place. And that's all that I have to say. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, is, is there any uh, discussion or questions um, by the board? Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, so your property is a duplex uh, up and down? Yes, it is. And uh, how many bedrooms in each unit? Two bedrooms in each unit. And just one bath? One bath. Uh, is you, you occupy one unit and do you rent the other unit? We occupy the entire house and we have not rented the units for 25 years. Our um, our daughters both live out of the home and as most uh, um, Parents know um, both of them have, have returned to live with us twice while they get back on their feet. And I I don't know, I'm hoping that it won't happen again, but things are not looking good right now for us. So I have not rented our other duplex, uh, other side for over 25 years. Okay, appreciate that. Um, are there any other questions or comments from board members? Uh, seeing none. Uh, Thank you for your time, Mr. Gordhammer, and you'll be notified in writing um, after adjournment of, of our uh, the appeal board. Thank you. Have a great day. Yep, thanks. Bye now. Okay, uh, we have, I believe we have heard all the cases that we, we will have presentations. Is, is that correct, uh, Jackie or Rebecca? Uh, Mr. Chair, you are correct. That ends the call. The applicants will be calling in for today's hearings. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will uh, consider and act on the appeals from the 12 to 12:30 time period. We'll start with item number 22, appeal for 2348 Seabury Avenue, case number 20BH-0069. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, 
Uh, this is having uh, based on the sales history and how difficult it was to sell. Uh, I would I would consider lowering the assessed value to the sale price of November 15th of 2019. I agree with that assessment. Um, Board Member Reed. I agree as well. Would one of you like to make a motion? I'll put it in a motion to uh, reduce uh, the property valuation at 2348 Seabury to 463,500. Do I have a second? A uh, second, Reed. Um, it has been uh, moved by Havoc and seconded by Reed to. Uh, decrease the 2020 estimated market value to $452,500. I will ask uh, the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havoc? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, 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 the assessor's office has a uh, comment or a question of me. Uh, Ms. Malkowitz. Chair Anderson, we can save this for the end of all of your business when you're complete. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll go on to item number 23, appeal for 2544 Aldrich Avenue South, case number 20BH-0072. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, I have a comment. Um, uh, while we were listening to the other case, I did uh, look it up online. It's a, it's a very nice building. And to answer your question, uh, Chair Anderson, it is a, a four unit up down, so it's a it's it's a it's a fourplex. It's not a it's not a house. Uh, I did look at the interior photos. Uh, it's in extremely good shape, and uh, rents are around fourteen hundred. So although I I think that it's it's pushing the market value, I think that uh, perhaps uh, it it will sustain the new value. Okay, thank you, uh, Board Member Reed. Do you have any comments? Well, I would agree with that. Thank you. Um, oh, I would agree with that. Sorry about that. And she did not present any comps or other arguments, so I would sustain the value. Sounds good. Uh, I have no additional comments to what what you've made. Um, is there a motion? This I is will. I will oh. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I would I would move to sustain the value of seven hundred and seventy two thousand at twenty five forty four Aldridge Avenue South. Do I have Havig a second? second? Has been moved by Reed and seconded by Havig to sustain the twenty twenty estimated market value at seven hundred seventy two thousand uh, dollars. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havig. Aye. Board Member Reed. Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson. Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item number 24, the appeal for 4501 Washburn Avenue South, case number 20BH-0073. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? I, I guess that I have a comment on 4501 Washburn Avenue South. Um, based on the location, it is an extremely desirable location. He's correct. It's it's a wonderful place to live. Uh, I do know that the sales in that area uh, have been mostly for land value. He does have a duplex, uh, so I think uh, the, the the new value of 653,000 for that area is substantiated. So um, that's just a comment at this point. Thank you. Um, 
I can understand and feel his pain uh, as far as, uh, uh, you know, items related to the uh, COVID crisis here. Uh, it has put a lot of people in difficult circumstances and um, going forward, we may see adjustments in value, but uh, this, uh, our, our decision needs to be based on the value at uh, January 1st of this year. Um, he did not provide overwhelming evidence. Uh, the comparable duplex sale over on Grand Avenue is a uh, completely different neighborhood in Kingfield on the other side of the lake and quite a distance away. Uh, I know there's other sales closer by that uh, could have been better suited for this. Um, board Member Reed or Board Member Havig, do you have any other additional comments or questions? Well, I would agree. I do feel his pain and I um, also acknowledge that he didn't provide a lot of uh, convincing evidence, although he mentioned that his has not been updated and he's not using it as an income producing property. But with that said. I, I, don't I, have I would. I would I would make a motion to sustain the value of uh, 4501 Washburn Avenue South at 653,000. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Reed. It's been moved by Havoc and seconded by Reed to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $653,000. We'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havoc? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Malmquist, uh, would you like to uh, make a comment on our uh, remaining uh, appeals for today? Yes, Chair Anderson, thank you very much for giving me this time. Um, as you know, we have um, been discussing the scheduling of the remaining cases. Um, we have scheduled through tomorrow. You have two sessions. You have 9 a.m. until 1230 tomorrow morning, and then you have from 4 to 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. At the conclusion of 7 at 7 p.m. tomorrow, you will have 75 cases remaining by my count. And so we have been discussing with the Department of Revenue and our other partners um, and staff here and at the clerk's office, our IT resources and communications resources, how to best accomplish um, this. And so state statute dictates that the local board must adjourn by May 31st. Due to next week, the week of May 25th, being a council city council off week, the local board is not able to reconvene next week and will need to adjourn by May 21st. By May 21st, so that's Thursday. Um, so for these reasons, um, we're asking the board for some direction as to how you would like to handle the remaining um, 75 cases. My recommendation at this point after discussing with the Department of Revenue is to process the remaining 75 cases as write-ins and I, we could notify all of these appellants that rather than calling in, they will be heard via writing um, all the materials that they've already provided for you that we have um, sent out to you. Um, and then they would be notified of your decision when you adjourn. Thank you. Um, is it uh, you said uh, we have to adjourn by Thursday the 21st? Uh, we had discussed a possibility of uh, meeting on Friday. Has that been eliminated? It appears that we have limited technical resources on Friday afternoon to be able to produce the meeting. OK, thank you. Um, uh, well, I, I would like to proceed then, as you suggested, uh, uh, turning the remaining 70 some cases into write in cases and uh, proceeding uh, accordingly. OK, very good. We will notify all of those appellants today so that they're made aware and um, that you will act on those on Thursday and we will revise your schedule for Thursday to accommodate those. 
70 some more cases on on Thursday. Yes, they will all be the write ins though, so you can review them in advance and then have conversation and discuss them okay. during your sessions on Thursday. It's still going to be a lot. Yes. Um, <laughs> OK, um, we'll uh, re uh, resume new business. Uh, we have uh, seven cases that were carried over from yesterday. Uh, in order to give the applicant a chance to speak this morning uh, to explain his 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 thinking. Uh, we have heard that now uh, he will not have the opportunity to, to call back in uh, as no other applicant has had that opportunity either. But we will discuss uh, item uh, starting with item number 25 2714 Pleasant Avenue case number 20BH-0041 and um, are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, Chair Anderson, is is this a commercial building? I'm I'm not finding the uh, the paperwork for the these appeals. Uh, the the paperwork uh, was was uh, provided yesterday. This is uh, Bernard O'Brien is the representative for Nebro Holdings and uh, the representative on all the other uh, cases. Uh, he did not pro provide any comparable sales, just in general uh, disputed the city and county's uh, way of increasing property values. And, and are these all uh, are these all cases that are out of our purview again? Uh, th they are, uh, I believe, residential properties, but uh, again, he provided no comparable sales, just a, a general overview and um, uh, his created metrics to uh, explain why uh, his properties were overvalued. So um, there's a general uh, lack of information to make any uh, direct comparisons to any other recent sales or uh, any other options. OK, thank you. Board member Reed, could you carry the could you carry the ball on the motions of this? And I'm I'm sure my papers are somewhere here, but they're in a pile. So uh, yeah, would you I have the help, same. Help? I, I, I would love to. So I uh, removed <laughs> those from my notebook today and I'm looking through yesterday's and I'm having the same problem. Mr. Chair, if it's helpful. Um, yes, it's. It's page 609 in the packet from yesterday. I believe I can find it, so hang on a sec. And they're all, all uh, subsequent to each other, so. Okay, I'm getting close here. Let's see, six, okay. I can make a motion. Thank you. I move to sustain the value of 325,500 at 2714 Pleasant Avenue. Thank you. Do I have a second? Have a second. Um, uh, is there any uh, discussion or questions from the board? Hearing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havig? Aye. Board member Reed? Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Sherry Anderson? Aye. The three ayes and two absent. The motion passes. Thank you. Item number 27, appeal for, or excuse me, item number 26, appeal for 2730 Pleasant Avenue, case number 20BH-0042. Uh, the city's uh, assessed market value on this is 366500 uh, It's the same applicant, um, Bernard O'Brien. Um, is there any discussion or questions? I is would there? move to sustain the value of 366500 at 2730 Pleasant Avenue. Thank you. Is there a second? Uh, second, Havoc. Been moved by Reed and seconded by Havoc to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $366,500. Uh, 
I will ask the clerk to call a roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havick? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item number 27, appeal for 3228 3rd Avenue South, case number 20BH-0043. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, the city assessed market value for 2020 is $352,000. Any additional comments or a motion? This is Reed. I would move to sustain the value of $352,000 at 3228 3rd Avenue South. Is there a second? Second, Havig. Thank you. Uh, it has been moved by uh, Reed and seconded by Havig to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $352,000. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havig? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absents, the motion passes. Item number 28, appeal for 3411 Fremont Avenue North, case number 20BH-0044. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, the city assessed market value is 195.5. Are there any other questions or comments? Hearing none, is there a motion? Uh, this is Reed. I would move to sustain the value of 195,500 at 3411 Fremont Avenue North. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Having second. Been moved by Reed and seconded by Havoc to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $195,500. Uh, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havoc? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 29, 2721 Upton Avenue North. Uh, case number 20BH-0045. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? Uh, the 2020 city assessed value is $216,000. With no other comments, is there a motion? Uh, this is Reed. I move to sustain the value of $216,000 at 2721 Upton Avenue North. Thank you. Is there a second? Havig, second. It's been moved by Reed and seconded by Havig to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $216,000. We'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havig? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Item number 30, 1710 Oliver Avenue North, case number 20BH-0046. Are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? The 2020 assessed value is at $222,500. Uh, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I will ask for a motion. This is Reed. I move to sustain the value of 222,500 at 1710 Oliver Avenue North. Thank you. Is there a second? Havig, second. It has been moved by Reed and seconded by Havig to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $222,500. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Bland is absent. Board member Havig? Aye. Board member Reed? Aye. Board member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Uh, lastly, item number 31, appeal for 814 Oliver Avenue North, case number 0BH-0047. Uh, board, 
the city, uh, are, the, are, are there any questions or discussions from board members related to this property? The 2020 assessed value is at 196.5. Uh, hearing none, I, uh, may I have a motion, please? This is Reed. I move to sustain the value of $196,500 at 814 Oliver Avenue North. Thank you. Is there a second? Havig, second. It has been moved by Reed and seconded by Havig to sustain the 2020 estimated market value at $196,500. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Bland is absent. Board Member Havoc? Aye. Board Member Reed? Aye. Board Member Tinker is absent. Chair Anderson? Aye. With three ayes and two absent, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, with that, we have completed all items on the agenda for this meeting. I will ask the members and staff if there are other matters be, uh, to come before this meeting. Pause, pause, pause. Chair Anderson, this is Rebecca. Yeah. At this point in time, no, we do not have anything additional for you. Um, just know that all of your packets are on their way for the remaining days scheduled. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if not, and without objection, I will declare this meeting recessed until May 20th, 2020 at 9 a.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. You guys did a great job. Appreciate it.